Good morning, 17. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. If everybody could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. We're standing tall, we're facing our flag, hands are placed over our hearts. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for our school mission statement. We are here to be literate, innovative, and proficient scholars who will participate in rich academic learning in a nurturing environment where we will rise. This will be accomplished by creating collaborative and supportive teaching and learning systems involving the entire PS17 community. Okay, family, before we start our book, today is May 5th. Um, it is also called Cinco de Mayo, or the 5th of May. And this is a day that um, celebrates the date of the Mexicans armies, Mexican armies, May 5th, 1862 victory over France at the Battle of Puebla during the Franco-Mexican War. It's also known as the Battle of Puebla Day. So happy Cinco de Mayo. We're going to start a book today called Mr. Flux. Today's book is by uh, Kayo McClear, and Matt Stevens, so the author and the illustrator are different people, unlike the book that we were reading um, yesterday, and also Thank You Omu, which has the same writer and illustrator. Um, this book is about change and finding joy in changes big and small. Um, we're going to get introduced to a character named Martin. And Martin lives in a plain neighborhood, predictable neighborhood. People don't like change. And then along comes Mr. Flux and things start to happen and people start to, to panic a little bit because they don't like change. Um, what's interesting, and I'm going to read this from the author's note before we start reading. Um, this book is loosely inspired by um, an artist that founded the Fluxus movement, George Maxacunas, who along with other like-minded artists, and musicians um, talked about the virtues of flux or change and saw art in very unusual things. So um, a different type of artist, if you will, saw, saw art in different type of things. So let's read, let's start reading Mr. Flux. We're not going to finish the book today. Um, as, we, as we read, think about how Martin might be changing and how he might be able to influence the people around him because they're not, they're very curious about Mr. Flux. They're curious, but they're cautious. They sort of want to stay away from him because he's bringing change to their very orderly, plain neighborhood. So let's see what happens. And as we, we read, think about how you react to change um, because sometimes change is hard. So think about your own reactions to change and how change can be a challenge and how though, think about a time where change was good in the end. And it, it, and it taught you something and you learned something. So here we go. That neighborhood looks very, everything looks the same. Okay, let's see. There once was a boy named Martin who didn't like change. Actually, it wasn't that he didn't like change, more that he didn't know change. He lived with his family in a square house set in the middle of an unchanging street with a fixed number of trees, dogs, cats, and cars. It was a very nice but predictable place. Uh -oh. That is, until a man named Mr. Flux arrived one afternoon out of nowhere in a noisy old van. Mr. Flux didn't just no change, he loved it. He walked around wearing a bowler hat and called himself an artiste, even though he didn't make drawings or paintings or sculptures or anything remotely art-like. That's interesting. Mr. Flux considers himself an artist, even though the author's letting us know he doesn't paint, he doesn't make sculptures, he doesn't do any of that. So let's think about 
expanding our definition of an artist and of art as we read this book also. So we're thinking about change. And then we're also thinking about broadening and adding to our definition of being an artist or art. Because he considers himself an artist. Let's see. While others were busy making sure everything was the same, Mr. Flux enjoyed mixing things up. So it looks like he's having a cup of something to drink, like tea or coffee on a log. And I don't know what this is. It looks like a fountain, but it's a fish. It's interesting. That crazy artist, oops, sorry. That crazy artist said Martin's dad, what could he possibly be thinking? Said his mother. Hmm. And so it went, each day seeming to pass like every other day, until one morning, Martin was riding home on his old red bicycle because his new red bicycle was too new and scary to ride. He was riding his old red bicycle because his new red bicycle was too old and scary to ride. Oh, maybe he doesn't like change, that's why. So he just wants to stick with his old bicycle. He doesn't want to try his new one out. That's interesting. So, and the day took an unexpected and sharp turn. Right there, in the middle of the path, sat a large wooden box. And it says, property of Mr. Flux. He noticed property of Mr. Flux printed on one side. And since Martin was a good neighbor, he knew what he had to do. He set his bike aside and carried the box to Mr. Flux, Mr. Flux's house and knocked three times. Almost instantly, the door flew open and there stood Mr. Flux, Mr. Flux in his bowler hat and pajamas. My name is Martin, said Martin. I found your box. Hello, Martin. Look, my friend just sent me a piece of the sky, said Mr. Flux, holding up a blue puzzle piece. So... Martin finds a box. He knocks on the door of Mr. Flux's house to return the box. And Mr. Flux holds up a puzzle piece, a blue puzzle piece. And instead of saying, look what my friend sent me, a puzzle piece, Mr. Flux is saying, look what my friend sent me. He sent me a piece of the sky. So it seems like Mr. Flux has quite an imagination and that might be why he sees art everywhere. Let's keep reading. I wonder what his influence is going to be on Martin and the rest of the town. Did you know that I have a phone collection and a tuba filled with tennis balls? What? I wonder if he considers that art, a tuba filled with tennis balls and a phone collection. That's interesting. Remember, we talked about that we're adding to our definition of art. So how can a phone collection be considered art, and a tuba filled with tennis balls. That's interesting. Don't you want it? Asked Martin, holding out the box. Mr. Flux looked at the box and shook his head. No, you should keep it. But what's in it? Said Martin. Why, it's filled with change. Said Mr. Flux. Full of change. I don't think he means like coins. I think he means like actual change, like something will be different. Let's keep reading. Oh, said Martin, and he thanked Mr. Flux politely. He didn't want to open it. He suspected it contained cacophony, disorder, and germs. But he didn't want to get rid of it either. So Martin headed home with the large wooden box on his handlebars. We're going to read one more page. Oh. Doesn't look like people are happy with the box. Let's read. What a commotion that box caused. Oh dear, what's what's next, said one man. Heavens to much regard, said another. Martin looked around at the crowd of worried and unhappy faces, gazing over the hedges, and knew what he had to do. He returned to Mr. Flux's house and knocked on the door. You can have your box back. We don't like change around here. 
Oh, said Mr. Flux. And why is that? Because change is upsetting and we just like things just the way they are. So we're going to stop here. Martin is returning the box on behalf of the entire community, it seems, and says something like, go away, we don't want you here. We don't like change. So what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen when we finish the book? Do you think the neighborhood is going to take to change? Or do you think they're going to kick Mr. Flux out of the neighborhood and say, nope, we want to stay the same. Think about what's going to happen. And tomorrow we'll find out. PS 17, we love you. Have an amazing, amazing day. And say it with me one more time as always. PS 17, we love you.